We're going to talk about pharmacodynamics today. And um, um, Nick, are you recording it? Yes, though, I'm recording as well. Ah, because you are the host now. Okay, yeah. great. So, so pharmacodynamics is a study of the drug mechanisms that produce biologic or physiologic changes in the body. So it's like um, pharmacodynamics means that when a drug gets into the body, what happens to it? That's ph pharmacodynamics. And the interaction is usually at the cellular level between the drug and then the cellular component. And this is what leads to the drug action. So when the drug gets into the body, the action that it produces at the level of the cells is what we see as the effect of the drug or the drug action. So these cellular components, they include um, complex proteins that make up the cell membranes, enzymes or target receptors. So when the drug gets into the body, it acts on either the cell membrane, enzymes in the cell, proteins or target receptors. So what comes up as a result of the action of the drug on these various components is what we know, we know as the drug effect. So a drug can modify the cell function or the rate of the function of the cell, but it cannot impact a new function to the cell or to the target tissues. What this means is that let's say, um, the cell is involved in transportation of sodium um, as a result of opening or closing sodium gated channels. If the, you are giving something, some medication to regulate this um, sodium, that can only change the function of this cell with regards to the sodium gated channel. It cannot, for example, produce a completely different effect like potassium gated channel or chloride gated channel. I hope you get it. So the drug is just going to modify, modify the function of the cell, but it cannot give the cell a new function. It, the drug effect depends on what the cell itself is capable of accomplishing. So it can either increase or decrease the function of the cell. So the drug can alter the target cell's function either by modifying the environment of the cell, so physical or chemical environment of the cell, or by interacting with a, a receptor, which is a specialized um, location on the cell membrane or inside the cell to effect a change. So for example, um, the, the drug can affect the cell membrane, there's a receptor on the cell membrane. Once the drug recognizes the receptor, there's binding. This binding leads to changes which lead to the action of the drug. So when you take in the medication, it can either change the environment of the cell or it interacts with the receptor to lead to the function of the drug. So when we look at the receptors, the receptors the action of the drug on the receptor is categorized as either agonist or antagonist. Agonist means that it mm. is in tune with the function of the receptor. Antagonist means it is against the function of the receptor. So when we take agonist drugs, many drugs work by stimulating or blocking drug receptors. A drug which is attracted to a receptor does that because it displays an affinity for that receptor. So if there is a, there's a drug in the, in the body and the drug is supposed to let it act on your heart. Now there is something that causes an attraction of this drug to the heart, the receptors. And that is what would lead to the action of the drug. So, when the drug displays an affinity for the receptor and stimulates the receptor, then we say that this drug acts as an agonist because it is stimulating the receptor to increase its normal physiologic function. So the agonist drug will bind to the receptor and produce a response. The ability 
to initiate a response after binding with the receptor is referred to as the intrinsic activity of the medication. So just to summarize, an agonist drug is attracted to the receptor. It gets to the receptor, it binds to the receptor, and then it stimulates the receptor to amplify its action. And this is what an agonist does. On the other hand, an antagonist drug is a medication that prevents the response from occurring. So um, the drug gets to the receptor, it binds to it and prevents the receptor from carrying out its physiologic function. Antagonists can be classified as either reversible or irreversible or competitive or non-competitive. Obviously, reversible or irreversible means that um, when the drug binds to the receptor, that bond can easily be broken. So that's reversible. Irreversible means that, <coughs> excuse, irreversible means that the bond between the drug and the receptor cannot be broken. And so this means that that will stay in. It does not undergo any uh, disruption. Then competitive or non-competitive, we will look at that closely in the next class. Please, as I go along, if you have any questions, you are free to ask so that um, we can clarify all doubts before we go. So looking at the same antagonist drugs, competitive and non-competitive antagonists. A competitive antagonist will compete with the agonist for the receptor site. So remember that the agonist is the, is the drug that amplifies or stimulates the physiologic function of the receptor. And the antagonist is the drug that blocks the physiologic function of the receptor. Now, if the antagonist... Hello, ma Hello madam. Hello. Yeah, please. Um, the drug, when the drug binds to the receptor, is it Are that they... it's... <clears throat> when the drug binds to the receptor, uh -huh. is it that it stimulates the receptor to function or when it binds to the receptor, it stimulates the cell to function? So the receptor um, has a function. So let's okay. say sodium gated channels. Okay, so yes, when the drug binds to the receptor, it causes the sodium channels to open okay. and allows sodium to enter the cell. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. So that is the agonist action. It stimulates the physiologic function. Of All right, thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. So when we come to the competitive antagonist drug, what it does is that it competes with the agonist for the receptor site. So the receptor has a site which is compatible with the drug. And it can bind to both the agonist and the antagonist drug. So if the drug is able to compete with the agonist for the receptor site, then we call it a competitive antagonist. And this type of antagonist binds reversibly to the receptor site. So assuming you give a larger dose of the agonist, then this larger dose would, um, would displace the antagonist from the receptor site and leads to a reversal of the antagonist action. So that's the competitive antagonist. A non-competitive antagonist will bind to the receptor site and block the effects of the agonist. So it is bound there and its effect cannot be reversed until um, there's decay or there's excretion. It is stuck, basically. Okay. Now, um, there are other classifications. So if a drug acts on a variety of receptors, then the drug is said to be non-selective. So it means that when you take the medication, this usually occurs with medications that have a lot of adverse effects because the medication can bind to other receptors and stimulate 
other receptors and cause other problems, even though that's not the main reason for which you are giving the drugs. And so this um, is the non-selective medication. In addition, some of the receptors can also be classified by their specific effects. So for example, we have beta receptors. We'll talk about the classification of medications in detail later on. We have beta receptors. Now the beta receptors will bind to receptors in the heart, the heart muscle, and cause increased heart rates. And the beta receptors can also cause um, bronchial relaxation. That is relaxation of the The bronchus, sorry. Uh -huh. When you take the beta receptors, the beta receptors can further be divided into beta 1 and beta 2. So the beta 1 primarily acts on the heart, the heart muscle. And the beta 2 receptors will primarily act on the smooth muscles and the gland. So if you say that a medication is specific, is a beta 1 receptor agonist, it means that it would mimic the action of the beta-1 receptors on the heart and cause an increase in heart rate. On the other hand, if you say that the medication is the beta-1 receptor antagonist, it means that when it binds, um, you take the medication, it slows down the heart rate. In the same way, if you take a beta-2 receptor agonist, it means that it causes bronchodilation. So an example is tavitamol. We use tavitamol for the management of asthma. I think we even talked about it in pediatrics. Now, tavitamol is a beta-2 receptor agonist. And the beta-2 receptors, what they do is that they cause bronchodilation or they, they increase the caliber of the bronchioles. And so when you have asthma, there is constriction of the bronchioles and difficult. So when you give the beta-2 receptor agonist, it causes the bronchioles to dilate and therefore relieving the difficulty breathing. So let's look at what we mean by drug potency. Drug potency refers to the relative amount of a drug required to produce a desired response. And drug potency is usually used to compare two drugs. So, for example, um, one drug, you need two milligrams to produce a certain effect. Another drug, you need five milligrams to produce the same effect as drug A. So, comparing the two drugs, you can use drug potency. So, if the drug produces the same response but at a lower dose, that drug is more potent. I hope it's clear. If you have two medications and you need a small amount of medication A to have the same effect as a larger amount of medication B, then you'd say that medication A is more potent than medication B. So we use the term drug potency to compare two different drugs. Then we also have maximum effects. If you plot a graph of the dose of the medication against the effect. You usually have the graph, let me, okay, so this is how the graph looks like. The dosage increases as you increase the, um, the response increases as you increase the dosage. Gradually, as you increase the dosage, the response also increases. Okay, so this slide should have come before the other one, sorry. So a dose response curve is usually used to represent graphically the relationship between the dose of the drug and the response it produces. So if you give five milligrams and it causes a certain response, you give 10 milligrams, the response increases. So this keeps happening until you get to a certain point, which is the maximum effect, whereby no matter how much drug you give, the response is the same. There's little or no increase in response. And this is the maximum effect of the medication. And so usually you find this at the peak in the dosage response curve, as evidenced by point D. 
to explain the curve further. So if you look at the curve, the curve shows the dose response for two different drugs. You have drug X and you have drug Y. At low doses of each of the drug, there's an increase in the response. So if you take, for example, from point A to point B for drug X, you realize that at point A, the value on the y-axis is lower than point B. So when you increase the dosage from point A to point B, you realize that the value on the dose um, axis, which is the x-axis, also increases. And this is what we mean by an increase in the effect of the drug with increase in dosage of the medication. Now, when you increase the dosage further to point C, there is a dramatic increase in the effect. Okay, so if you look at the dosage on the x-axis and you look at the dosage on the x-axis for point C, you realize that there's a dramatic increase in the dosage. And when you look at the y-axis, you realize that the percentage of maximal response also jumps up. So this is what the dose response curve illustrates. Now, as you go closer to the end of the curve, go closer to point D, that is moving from, from point C to point D, you realize that even though you are increasing the dosage, the effect or the change between point C on the y-axis and point D on the y-axis is very little. So point D corresponds to 100. D corresponds to 100%. If you extrapolate point C, it's maybe we can say it's like 90%. Um, so you realize that the difference between the 90 and the 100 is very little compared to the difference between point B and point C. And so this is what the dose response curve illustrates. Looking at the, the same graph for the two different medications, you realize that drug X is more potent than, the, than drug Y. Why is this so? Because the same response, um, so let's say point A, you see point A and point E, they are the same level with respect to the percentage of maximal response on the y-axis. They are all at point zero, okay? But you realize that the dosage of drug X is 0 0.0001. And the dosage of drug Y is 0 0.01. So the dosage of drug Y is about 100 times the dosage of drug X. And yet the effect is the same. So a drug is more potent than its counterpart if you need a small amount of that drug to, to produce the same effect that a larger amount of another drug would produce. So in this instance, you realize that drug X is more potent than drug Y. Then there is also what we call the margin of safety. Most drugs will produce multiple effects. So it can increase the heart rate, maybe it can have an effect on the muscle, maybe it can have an effect on the blood pressure and so on. So the relationship between the desired effects that you are seeking to produce by giving the medication and its adverse effects is called the, the, the drug therapeutic index. This is also called the margin of safety. So for example, the, the relationship between how much of a medication would give you the desired effect and how much of it will give you the adverse effect or the undesired effect is what we call the margin of safety. It is like the, the gap between the two, how much um, room you have to maneuver in terms of the dosage. And the margin of safety is the same as the therapeutic index. 
and it usually measures the difference between an effective dose for 50% of patients treated and the minimal dose at which adverse effects occur. So for example, we have a drug. If you give five milligrams of the drug, 50% um, of patients would have the therapeutic effect. If you give 10 milligrams of the drug, you will have adverse effects. So 10 milligrams is the least amount of the drug that you can give in order to produce the adverse effect. So the margin of safety is the difference between the 10 milligram and the five milligram, okay? So we say that a drug has a narrow therapeutic index or a narrow margin of safety. If there's a very small difference between its therapeutic dose and the lethal dose or the dose that will cause an adverse reaction. On the other hand, we say that a drug has a high therapeutic index or a wide margin of safety if the difference between the therapeutic dose and the lethal dose is very big or is very wide. So a drug with a high therapeutic index or a wide margin of safety means that it has a less potential for side effects or toxic effects compared to a drug which has a narrow therapeutic index. So if you take, let's say, um, um, phenytoin, you compare phenytoin to phenobab. The, the phenytoin has a very narrow therapeutic index. If you give phenytoin and the, it goes just a little overdose, you can cause cardiac arrest. You can increase the dosage without having any risk of adverse effects. So that is how we look at the margin of safety when it comes to the medication. So if you are reading about a medication and they say that oh, this medication has a narrow therapeutic index, what it means is that if you do not titrate the dosage well, the patient could get into trouble. <clears throat> okay, so if we have any questions, let's discuss the questions. I don't know if we can move on to the next slide or you want to rest before your next lecture. Hello. Hello, Doc. Yes, uh, I think if, there, if anybody has questions, fine, but if not, maybe we can move on to the next slide. Uh, I'm sure we can okay, are there any questions from anybody? Any questions? Madam. Yes. Uh, talking of the reversible and irreversible, uh, uh, what is it? Mm. Uh, the reversible and irreversible. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, please. Is that what happens to? You know, when people take a certain drug, they have reaction and they have to counter it with another drug to reverse it. Like something like people reacting with something like a sephorism uh, injection. Mm -hmm. And they have to give hydrocortisol to reverse. I want a little bit of clarification on that. On that, okay. So um, if you, give an antidote it's like you are pushing the medication from the binding site on the receptor okay so that is what an antidote will do in the same way like you're, you're saying you're alluding to that's exactly the scenario are we okay yes madam all right any questions? Any other questions? Uh, uh, hello, madam. Yes. Yeah, I read somewhere about this one is just about contribution, about the you uh, maximum. About... Okay, Fred, your internet is bad. The dose maximum, the maximum. The Hello. Yes. Go ahead, please. 
uh, arrest the maximum when you are doing things. When you are adding, when you are taking a drug, the maximum. The maximum. The, <laughs> hello. Yeah. The maximum. I read that the maximum is achieved when there is a saturation of the uh, the receptors. Receptors. When the receptors yes. are when the receptors are all saturated, yes. then it becomes maximum. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So when the receptors are saturated, any more drug that you give will not produce any effect. So it's the same thing. Do you yes. get it? Yes. yes. Hello, yes. Fred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Are you okay? Fred, do something about your network. <laughs> Are you okay, Fred? Sure, so sure. I'm okay, madam. All right. Thank you. Is there any more questions? <clears throat> madam, let's box on. All right. Okay. So, Nick, you have to make me the host again so that okay. I can share. Or allow me to share my slides. Look, it appears I just have to make you the host again so that you can share. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. So. I think I can share it now. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Who is Kwe Kwa Mwa? That's uh, Enoch. Enoch. Akun. OK. Look, we have four so, minutes, uh, three minutes. So when it ends, uh, start again maybe then. we should we should end the session and then and then start again. Yeah, restart. Yes, uh -huh. So that we don't cut. Yeah. Cut. Yes, All right. All right.